over the electron configuration. I'm gonna move on to chapter 10, which is kind of a continuation of everything we talked about. But do I have any questions before I keep going? All right, so chapter 10. Chapter 10, I think is called bonding. And in this chapter, we're gonna talk about basically how these compounds bond to each other, how they share electrons or how they transfer electrons. So when we talk about bonding for chapter 10, um, we gotta remember a few things. We gotta remember a few things. First off, remember we talked about when we do the noble gas configuration. So let's go back to the noble gas configuration of a compound. So if we look at magnesium, I'm looking at magnesium versus manganese this time. So if we look at magnesium on the periodic table, we see that it's number 12. And if we draw out the electron configuration for magnesium, even if we do the noble gas configuration, so the noble gas configuration for magnesium, we're gonna go to we're bonding. We're gonna go to the noble gas of the previous row, which is neon. And if I write out the noble gas configuration, it's gonna say neon in brackets. And I say neon, if I continue, I'm gonna say, then say 3S2 is a noble gas configuration for neon. So neon, I mean, it's for magnesium, neon 3S2. Now, what ends up happening is we see that this 3S2 for magnesium is in the higher energy level. So everything else, for neon was in one and two energy levels, one and two, but then energy level three is the highest energy level. This energy level three has two electrons and these two electrons are the electrons that are furthest away from the nucleus. So it's saying if I were to draw magnesium, magnesium overall has 12 electrons. The electrons that are furthest away are in energy level three, and there's two electrons in this energy level three. Let's say this is N equals three. You got N equals one, N equals two. All right. We call these two electrons valence electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons that are furthest from the nucleus. They're in the highest energy level. And furthest from the nucleus. So remember when we were talking about the atomic size and we were saying, oh, <clears throat> the atomic size is the size of the nucleus, the distance from the nucleus to the electrons that are furthest away. Those electrons that are furthest away are called the valence electrons. And we can always figure them out from the electron configuration. So for instance, the easy way to look at it is if we know the noble gas configuration. So if we look at magnesium, we said it ends in 3s2. So that means those two electrons are in the highest energy level and they're the furthest from the nucleus. Calcium would be 4s2. Strontium would be 5s2. Beryllium would be 2s2. Helium would be 1s2. So we can say that everything in column two has two valence electrons because that's gonna be the highest energy level. <clears throat> so we can also say that the valence electrons equals the group number.
Meaning, if we go to, let's say for instance, nitrogen, let's just write out nitrogen. If we look at nitrogen, the electron configuration for nitrogen, I go to the noble gas configuration, which is gonna be helium still. Helium is still the noble gas in the row above it, but we're gonna say helium and then 2s2, 2p3. So it's 2s2, 2p3, like this for helium. I mean, for nitrogen. So we have two plus three. This is five electrons in the higher energy level. The highest energy level for nitrogen is two. Total, we have five electrons. If you look at nitrogen, nitrogen's in group five. So five electrons equals the valence electrons. So the easiest thing to say, all the elements or atoms in group five or 15 have five valence electrons. In group three, three. Group four, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Having eight valence electrons makes you stable. And that's why the noble, ga noble gases are stable because they have eight valence electrons. That's why they don't react with other elements. That's the whole key to all the other atoms gaining or losing electrons because they want to be like the noble gases and they want to have eight valence electrons. If they have eight valence electrons like the noble gases, then they're stable. For instance, fluorine, remember when fluorine turns into an ion, it has seven valence electrons normally, but when it turns into an ion, it turns into F minus. So that means it has eight electrons and that's why it gains an electron because it wants to have eight valence electrons like the noble gases. All right, so if I keep going and I talk about bonding, when I talk about bonding, elements are gonna bond together, together, atoms are gonna bond together with the valence electrons. Those are the electrons that they're gonna use to bond together. So let me just refresh your memory saying that we have molecular compounds. Remember molecular compounds is when we have two nonmetals and they form covalent bonds between the two nonmetals. And all covalent bonds mean is that they share their electrons. When we talk about bonding, we're gonna mainly talk about the molecular compounds bonding together. So an example of a molecular compound, just to remind you guys, an example would be carbon dioxide. Carbon is a nonmetal, oxygen is a nonmetal. When they come together, they're gonna share electrons and they're gonna form compounds like this. So this would be carbon, this would be the two oxygens on either side. And we're gonna talk about how these atoms come together and share their electrons. Now, to describe them, we're gonna use Lewis structures. We're gonna use Lewis structures to describe how these electrons are being shared amongst the atoms. Um, a few things we should know about Lewis structures or just when these compounds bound together. One is that they like to follow the octet rule. And the octet rule just says they want to have eight electrons. Most molecules want eight electrons. And I'll say makes most atoms and molecules happy. Not all, but most of them. When we draw out these Lewis structures, we're gonna draw them out. And we have a couple of things that I wanna make clear. Anytime you see a dot like this, I know before a half arrow represented an electron, 
Now a single dot represents an electron when we're talking about Lewis structures. So for example, if I look at carbon and I wanna draw the Lewis structure for carbon, carbon is in group number four or column number four when we talk about the main group elements. So remember it's one, two, three, four. I'm looking at carbon. Carbon's in group number four. So that means it has four valence electrons. And the way we write out those four valence electrons, we're gonna draw them in positions of up, down, left, right. So I can say one, two, three, four. That's the Lewis structure of just carbon. But if I look over at oxygen, oxygen is, in column number six. So that means it wants six valence electrons or it has six valence electrons. So that means it has six electrons in its highest energy level. And its highest energy level is level number two. And the way we draw out those six valence electrons is we say one, two, three, four, and then we can go back and double up five, six. It doesn't matter where you double up if you make the double or the pair here and here or if you make it at the top and at the bottom. It's just the most you can have on either side, left, right, up, down is two. All right, now this is if I draw out the Lewis structure of single atoms by themselves. But what we really care about is drawing out the Lewis structure for these molecules. And when we draw out the Lewis structures for the molecules, I'm going to give you guys some um, rules that we go through. And if we just follow these rules every time for this class, it's really straightforward. You step by step, we're going to get the right answer each time. There are a few exceptions, and I'll talk about that once I get through the rules. So let's just start off talking about the different types of electron groups, and sometimes they're called domains. Now guys, hopefully we're still here. I know a lot of you guys blanked out your faces, which is fine, but this part of the lecture is important because it's easy once, if you see me do it, it's hard to go back and teach it to yourself. So it's easy if I, if you just pay attention, let me walk you through it right quickly. When you go back and try to learn it on your own, it gets a little, you guys get confused and things. So give me like 15 more minutes and I'll try to make this quick. All right, so first thing, electron groups. First you have is a lone pair. When you see two dots like that, that's called a lone pair. Lone pair of electrons. Second type is if you have two electrons that are being shared, you draw a line between them and we call this a single bond. Third thing, if you're sharing four electrons, one, two, draw a line, three, four, Draw a line, we call this a double bond. And then finally, the other type is a triple bond. That's when you're trying to share six electrons. We call this a triple bond. Triple bond's the strongest bond, but it's also the shortest bond. Single bond is the weakest bond, but it's also the longest bond. 
And then the double bond is in the middle. Mm -hmm. Double bond is neither uh, short, neither long? It's just in the middle between these two. So this is the weakest, and this is a little bit stronger, and then this is the strongest. Or if this is the longest, this one's a little bit shorter, and then this is the shortest. All right, so if I keep going and I talk about how we're gonna draw out these Lewis structures, we're gonna follow some rules. Like I said, if we follow the rules all the way through each time, we're gonna get the right answer. And just bear with me. I'm just gonna do a few examples today and then I'll pick back up tomorrow with um, a lot more examples. All right. So this is just the rules for drawing Lewis structures. All right, first step. And I'm just gonna give an example as I go through. First step says some the valence electrons. From all the atoms in the molecule. All right, I'm gonna put a star here that says, if you have a cation, remember if you have a positive charge, that means you gotta subtract my pens work. Jeez. That means you have to subtract electrons. If I have an anion, remember that's a negative charge. That means you have to add to the number of electrons. Let's do an example really quickly. Let's say I'm trying to draw the Lewis structure or the layout for phosphorus trichloride. Phosphorus trichloride looks like this. The first step says sum the valence electrons. So we look at the periodic table. We look at phosphorus on the periodic table. Phosphorus is in group five. So I'm gonna say there are five valence electrons for phosphorus. And then I look at chlorine. Chlorine is in group seven. There are seven valence electrons for chlorine, but I have to remember that there are three chlorines. So I'm gonna say three times seven. I add that together, 21 plus five is 26 valence electrons. So that means in this molecule, they are gonna be sharing or playing around with 26 valence electrons. All right, so that's- I do not understand how it is three. CL3, you see PCL3 is the molecule that we're looking at. So we're saying three times chlorine. There's three chlorines. You see what I mean? Okay. All right. What so gonna, I'm sorry, what did you gonna apply then? Phosphorus is in group five. Oh no, the 21, oh, okay, 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 I see it. Okay. okay thank you. <laughs> All right, so phosphorus is in group five. So we look at the periodic table. It's in group number five. One, two, three, four, five. This is where phosphorus is. So I said five plus chlorine, which is in group seven. Mm -hmm. 
for three chlorine. So three times seven is 21 plus the five from phosphorus. There's 26 total valence electrons. This applies to only non-metals or uh, metals, metalloids, everything? It's non-metals. We're only looking at the molecular compounds, which are two non-metals. Phosphorus and chlorine are both non-metals. All right, so that's step one. Step two says draw a layout. So step two says draw a layout, basically show which atom is in the center. And then we're gonna draw a single bond from the center atom to each end atom. So what this means is Put a star, carbon is usually in the center. If there's no carbon in your molecule, the first element is usually in the center. And then, um, Star, hydrogen's never in the center. And we can also say uh, the atom that's more metal-like. So the atom that's more metal-like is also another indicator of which one's gonna be in the center. But if we go back to our PCO3 example. So if we go back to our PCO3 example, we're saying that, okay, we don't have a carbon in here. We have phosphorus and chlorine. So we can't say carbon's in the center. So then I can say, oh, the first element's usually in the center. So I'm gonna say my first element, which is phosphorus, I'm gonna put that in the center, meaning I'm just gonna draw it out. And then it says, draw a single bond from the center atom to each end atom. So I'm gonna draw a straight line to all the other chlorines. I have three chlorines. Those are gonna be my end atoms. I already set phosphorus in my central atom. So that means I'm gonna put phosphorus in the center and draw a single bond to each chlorine. Remember that the options are left, right, up, down. I could have drawn this other chlorine down here at the bottom at the top. It doesn't matter where you put it. So it just has to be left, right, up, or down. So to recap, first step said count up all the valence electrons. Second step says put which atom you think is going to go in the center and then draw a single bond to each one of those other atoms. <clears throat> Third step says let's subtract two electrons. I'm going to subtract two electrons for each single bond. Drawn 
sorry, for each single bond from the valence electrons in step one. Come on, write it down. All right, so I'm gonna subtract two electrons for each single bond from the valence electrons in step one. So what that means is if I look at these single bonds here, if I draw it out right here again, so I drew it out like this. If I subtract two electrons for each single bond, remember the single bonds are just saying I have two electrons that are bonded together. Each single bond means I'm sharing two electrons between the phosphorus and the chlorine. So if I subtract two, I started off with 26 valence electrons. I subtract two for each single bond, that's two, four, six. I'm subtracting six electrons. I have 20 valence electrons left. Okay, I'm gonna re repeat steps two and three. Step two said, figure out which atom goes in the center. The way I figure out which atom goes in the center is I say, if I have a carbon, carbon's always gonna go in the center or usually goes in the center. If I don't have carbon in my compound, I'm gonna say the first element is gonna go in the center. And in this case, phosphorus is the first element or the one I have the least amount of. So phosphorus went in the center and then it says draw a single bond from each center at from for from the center atom to each end atom. So I drew a single bond, and then each single bond represents two electrons. So I'm saying two, four, six. I subtracted six electrons from the valence electrons. All right, so then step four says. <clears throat> put six valence electrons around all the end atoms. So step four says place six valence electrons around each end atom and subtract them from the valence electrons in step three. So a few stars on this step says, although I say put six around each end atom, hydrogen only needs two. So you don't need to put six around hydrogen. It's happy with two. Boron is happy with six and if you're in n equals three or higher you can have more than eight so if i go back to my example I had phosphorus, trichloride, looks like this. 
Remember we started off with 26 valence electrons. This was step one. Step three said subtract two for each single bond. So I subtracted two, four, six for each single bond. I was left with 20 valence electrons. Step four now says put six valence electrons around each of the end atoms. So I'm saying around each of the chlorines because they already have two that they're sharing with phosphorus. Remember the whole point is to get eight. All they need is six more. So the six more I'm gonna put around there. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have to put them in pairs. We have to put them in lone pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like this. So total, each chlorine has six electrons. Three of them are lone pairs. And then the other two, they're sharing with phosphorus. So it's two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. This is each chlorine has eight electrons. It's happy with eight electrons. So what I'm saying is I'm subtracting the six I put around each of the chlorines. So that's six times three. Six times three is 18. I'm gonna subtract 18 and I have two valence electrons left. Wait, why did you subtract the 18? Because I put six around each chlorine. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So I'm saying six around each chlorine, six times three is 18. Hey, man. So does, um, does that number six um, always remain six? It doesn't change, or is that the six that we got from subtracting? Um, you're saying this number six? Yeah. This that number six changes depending on what the molecule is. Remember, it was only six because I had step three. Yeah, I had the three single bonds. Sometimes I might just have two single bonds or sometimes I have four single bonds. Okay. Yeah, so it just depends on what you draw out for number two. Okay. All right. So now step number five, which is my last step, says place leftovers, leftover electrons on the center atom. And if they're not enough, they're upstairs, go, go to the attic. And if there are not enough electrons to make eight for the center atom, try multiple bonds. So when I go back to my example, my example, this is where we left off in step number four. I still had two valence electrons left. I gotta place those leftover electrons on the center atom. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna place them right here on the center atom. 
And now when I look at it, all the chlorines have eight, two, four, six, and they're sharing two with the phosphorus. And the phosphorus has eight, two, because it's sharing six, two, four, six, and then this last two as a lone pair. So the phosphorus has eight and the chlorines have eight. So everybody's happy because they're stable like the noble gases. All right, so let's just do a few more examples and then we can wrap up for today. All right, let's do some examples and then we'll wrap up. Do I have any questions before I keep going? All right, so I'm just gonna go through the steps with my examples. Uh, let's see, the first example says, let's do, let's do water as my first example. All right, so go back. Step number one says, let's sum the valence electrons from all the atoms in the molecule. So that's step one. Hydrogens in group one. There's two hydrogens, so I have to say two times one. Oxygen is in group six. So I put the six for valence electrons in oxygen, two plus six, there are eight valence electrons to play with. That's step one. Step two says, draw a layout, show which atom is gonna go in the center, and then put a single bond to the other atoms. So in this case, I have hydrogen and oxygen, I'm trying to decide, but a star says hydrogen is never in the center, so that means I'm gonna put my oxygen in the center and that means hydrogen is going to be on the end and I'm going to draw a single bond to each hydrogen. Step three says subtract two electrons for each single bond. So in this case, I have two single bonds. So two, four, I'm going to subtract four electrons. That means I have four electrons left to play with. So remember step three says subtract two electrons for each single bond. I only have two single bonds, so I want to subtract four electrons. And then I go to step four. Step four says place six valence electrons around each end atom. Normally I would place six valence electrons around the ones on the end. But one of my stars says hydrogen is only, is only needs two. So hydrogen is happy with just two electrons that it's sharing with the oxygen. Hydrogen cannot take six extra electrons. So hydrogen, it's like saying hydrogen's in group one. It only has one valence electron to begin with. So it's like it's saying it has one hand. So if I'm trying to shake hands or share hands with somebody else, I don't have the extra amount of hands. I can only share one hand. So hydrogen's happy with two. So I can say my hydrogens are satisfied. I then go to step five, which says place the leftover valence electrons around the center atom. My leftover are four. So I'm gonna say one, two, three, four. And that's the Lewis structure for water. Hydrogen's happy with two. Oxygen has two, four, six, eight. And then let me go ahead and do another example with multiple bonds and we can just pick up again tomorrow.
All right, do I have any questions before I go to the next example? No. No. All right, so let's do N2, let's do nitrogen gas. All right, the first step says, let's sum the valence electrons. Nitrogen is in group five. So I'm gonna say five times two. That means I have 10 valence electrons to play with. Step two says, say which one's gonna be the center atom, but since they're both nitrogen, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna say nitrogen, single bond nitrogen. Step three says subtract two electrons for each single bond. I only have one single bond. I'm gonna subtract two electrons, eight valence electrons left. Step four says put six electrons around each end atom. Since they're both the same atom, it doesn't matter which one I pick as the end atom. I'm just gonna pick the first one as the end atom and say, let me put six around here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I subtract those six, and now I only have two left. Step five says leftover electrons, put them around the central atom. I'm gonna put those two around the central atom. Now I'm out of valence electrons. But the problem here says I have two, four, six, eight for this nitrogen, but this nitrogen only has two, four. So one of my nitrogens is happy, the other one is not happy. The way to make the other one happy is this is what it means by step five. If there are not enough electrons to make eight for the center atom, try multiple bonds. When I try multiple bonds, I'm gonna say, dang it, my battery's dying. And when I try multiple bonds, that means I'm gonna take four of the electrons from, from the one nitrogen. So meaning I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna turn it into a bond. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna turn it into a bond. So it's no longer a lone pair, it's now a bond and the way the overall structure looks like is I say, okay, I still got those two, but the one at the top and the one at the bottom, I turned into a bond. So it's now a triple bond. And then I still got these two over here left. Doesn't matter where you write these lone pair, you can write them at the top, at the bottom, you can write them at the top. You just have to show that there is one lone pair on each of the nitrogens. So this is what I mean by try multiple bonds. Okay. Let me walk through it one more time. First step said, sum out the valence electrons, five times two. I got 10 to start with. Decide which atom is gonna go in the middle. There's a second step both nitrogen so it doesn't matter so then i put a single bond i put that orange single bond there i subtracted two for that orange single bond the third step said i'm sorry the fourth step said put six around each end atom i'm going to say two four six i subtract those six from the valence electrons and then the last step says the two that i have left over put them on the center atom I put those two on the center atom, but it only was happy because it had, only this nitrogen was happy because it had eight. This one had two and this orange single bond right here that was only four. So it needed four more. So I turned this lone pair into a, a bond and I turned this lone pair into a bond. And now it's a triple bond versus a single bond. All right, so let's, let's go through carbon dioxide first. So how many total valence electrons, guys? 16. We say 16. Everyone agree with that? Yes. yes. For carbon dioxide. OK, 16 valence electrons total. What's going to go in the middle? 
carbon. Carbon. Carbon's gonna go in the middle. I can say single bond, single bond. Doesn't matter if I put it up and down. Carbon's gonna go in the middle. That means my oxygens are gonna go in the end. I'm gonna subtract how many? Four. 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 Subtract four. I end up with 12. What do I do with those 12? You put them around the oxygen. One, two, six and six. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm out of valence electrons. Oxygens are happy, but carbon's not. What do you guys think I need to do to make the carbon happy? Double bond, move two electrons from both sides. Okay, so I can say this and this. Yeah. All right, so I end up getting overall. And then there's two lone pair. Is this what we got? Yes. Did anybody get, huh? Did anybody get a triple bond? Oh, and a single bond? No, nobody thought to do that? Because oxygen will have to be happy if we do that. Well, this is another way we can say these are resonance structures, but the preferred structure is this structure. So you guys are correct. I was just, sometimes I have students that say, well, why can't I do a triple bond and a single bond? In reality, you can, it's just the double bond on both sides. They like the symmetry. It's a preferred structure. Okay. All right, what about for the fluorine gas? So if I say fluorine gas, that means how many valence electrons? 14. 14 valence electrons, seven times two for fluorine. All right, they're both fluorine, so it doesn't matter what we put in the middle. So I just say F dash F. I'm gonna subtract two electrons. I'm left with 12. I'm gonna put six around each fluorine. And then I'm out of valence electrons. Is this what you guys got? Yep, yep. yep so that's it. Yep. Okay, so you guys feel comfortable with the Lewis structures? Yes. Okay, good. Can we uh, just really quick, one more time, just go over the specific rule of why carbon isn't happy until it has four electrons specifically? Well, no, the rule is everybody wants eight. Now, okay. what's that? Mm, okay. So you might be thinking that carbon wants four bonds, if you've heard that before. Um, no? Okay. I might just go review the lecture. Yeah, and then the other thing is you're probably just thinking carbon's in group four, so it has four valence electrons. Are you asking about that? Oh, that might be it. Okay, so carbon's in group four, so let's just look at everything that's in group four. So when we do the electron configuration, let's say we do the noble gas just to make it simple. We're gonna say helium in brackets. I'm just gonna write carbon out right here. The, we can just, if we do the regular, 1s2, 2s2, and then 2p2 is the electron configuration for carbon. Okay. And remember, we're only looking at the valence electrons the valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level or the highest energy level, the ones that are furthest away from the nucleus. And that's going to be all the electrons in energy level two. Okay. So there's two plus two. That's going to give us four valence electrons. So everything in group four is going to end in 2P2. I'm sorry, in P2. So this is 2P2, 3P2. But then you have to remember that they also have the 2s2, 2p2, 3s2, 3p2. So the highest energy level is going to give us four electrons for all the elements in group four. Okay. All right. And that's how we figure out the valence electrons. Same thing with group five, because it's going to end in p3. So you're going to have these three plus the first two over here, that's going to be five valence electrons. All right. So, all right, so since we get the Lewis structures, we pretty much draw them all out. 
the same. I'll go over the exceptions in a second, but let's go and talk about the how we really draw these structures out. So, yep. Carbon has like five balance, sorry, four balance electrons. So, how many silicon could it have? It's just one arrow below. So, carbon doesn't have 34 valence electrons. 34 valence electrons. So, how much silicon could it have? No, so carbon has just four valence electrons. Remember, valence are just the, only the electrons that are furthest away. So if I, if I drew a simple version of carbon, carbon, this is the electron configuration. Carbon's number six. It has six electrons total. So carbon has six electrons total. Those six electrons, I'm saying two of them are in energy level one. So I can say two of them in energy level two, one. Then there's another four of them in energy level two. There's two of them from the 2s and then two of them from the 2p. So one, two, three, four. This is the nucleus. These are the ones that are furthest away. So we call these the valence electrons. So my question is like uh, carbon has you know four valence electrons. So uh -huh. how many silicon could have silicon? Silicon has four as well. Okay, so silicon. If I look at the electron configuration for it, it's one s two, two s two, two p six, three s two, three p two. So all of those electrons, the last, the outer energy level ones are in level three this time. So it has one, two, and then level three has, is the one that's furthest away from the nucleus. So it's like saying in the first energy level, I have two. In the second energy level, I have eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then in the third one, I have four, one, two, three, four those four and the third one, it's still gonna be four. It's just, it has more electrons than carbon has total. Got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. and now, this isn't actually what it looks like in real life. This is just a simple way for me to draw it out so you guys can get a visual of it. Remember, the orbitals are really complicated. They actually have these shapes like spheres and dumbbells and clovers that the orbitals reside in, that the electrons reside in but this is just like an easy way for you guys to see what I'm talking about. All right, uh, so let's talk about, so like I was saying, these structures that we drew out, like this one and this one, these are 2D versions, you know, it's just up, down, left, right, but you know, we live in a three-dimensional world and there's actually real three-dimensional shapes that these molecules make. 